Brand Origins is made possible by Brand Baker. Get an entire team to manage your brand's social media pages for as low as $8.99 per month. Visit brandbaker.co for more details. In Southeast Asia, Gardenia Bakeries is the powerhouse brand that's been dominating the packaged bread industry. Gardenia is known primarily for their soft and tasty white bread and their wheat bread, edging out entrenched competitors in the countries they enter. Gardenia has been awarded the super brand status in the Philippines, Malaysia, and Singapore. Just what you would expect from a company that produces almost a billion loaves each year. In the Philippines, Gardenia projected sales of up to 8 billion pesos in 2019, growing by 18% from the previous year. The brand started out in Singapore and has since expanded to Thailand, Malaysia, the Philippines, India, and China. Gardenia Philippines currently has a 60% market share in the making of this episode, but as I was learning more about the brand, I found out that it's much bigger than I thought it was. We're going to talk about how Gardenia Bakery started, its expansion to other countries, and dive much deeper into Gardenia's operations, specifically in the Philippines. We go back to 1978 and focus on the man who made it all possible, Horatio Sai Slocum. Slocum was sent by the International Executive Service Corporation to Singapore to start a bakery business. He was an American baker who had 35 years of experience in the bakery business. And so in 1978, Gardenia Bakeries was born. It started out as a small bakery in Bukit Tima Plaza, Singapore. At that time, it was only a single branch, in-store bakery. Over time, it became evident that Gardenia's product was much more superior than competing breads in the market during that period. And as a result, the quality fueled its rise. By 1983, the brand's first commercial bakery at the Pandan Loop, Singapore, began operating. The facility had a production capacity of 2,000 loaves per hour. The concept was to have this central bakery supplying their bread products to retail stores and supermarkets around Singapore. Despite being up against entrenched competition, Gardenia became the most popular brand of packaged bread in Singapore within two years. Now, in order for us to fully see the bigger picture as to the size of Gardenia, we can't ignore QAF, the company that owns it. So bear with me. QAF initially started out as Ben and Company, a trading and logistics company that was founded in 1958. It was a sole proprietorship, but as it grew, it was incorporated into a private liability company and by 1967 was listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange. In 1984, Ben and Company changed its name to QAF. I'm not quite sure what QAF meant or why they had to change the name to QAF, but that's what happened. The following year, in 1985, QAF acquired Gardenia Bakeries. QAF saw the potential of Gardenia to become an international brand, and that's exactly what they started to work on. But even their success in Singapore and Malaysia couldn't compare to their dominance in the Philippines. In 1997, they put up their first plant in the Philippines in the Laguna Industrial Park in Binyan, Laguna. Even today, Gardenia prides itself with its plant because of the new baking technology they have. They claim that it is mostly an automated process capable of baking thousands of loaves every hour, something they felt they needed in order to invade Luzon, an island group in the Philippines where the national capital region and where the ultra-dense Metro Manila area can be found. You see, the Philippines is divided into three island groups, Luzon in the north, Visayas in the middle, and Mindanao in the south. Metro Manila is in Luzon and has a density of over 40,000 persons per square meter of land and is one of the most populated cities in the world. It is also home to the main business districts of the Philippines. And so Gardenia, knowing the strategic advantage of conquering Luzon first, put up its first plant in that region, giving them the capacity to supply their invasion of Metro Manila. Knowing that conquering Metro Manila means they get to serve the most number of people in the smallest area possible makes this move even more important. Especially because their plan is to dominate the Manila area and using their earnings from this region to fund their expansion into the Visayas and eventually Mindanao. Today, Gardenia has at least a 60% market share, taking the super brand status in the Philippines and becoming one of the most recognizable brands in the region. Now that they've established a beachhead in the country, they've set forth on expanding in the Visayas, primarily in Cebu, one of the Philippines' most profitable cities outside of the national capital region. 
Cebu is definitely the big fish in the Visayas, making it the primary staging point for the rest of the region. And so in 2011, Gardenia opened its plant in Cebu, furthering its expansion. Although Gardenia has reached almost every corner of the Visayas, unlike in the Manila area, it has yet to become the clear market leader in Cebu. But this hasn't stopped Gardenia from fueling their expansion, all thanks to the cash cow of their dominance in Luzon. In 2019, Gardenia spent a lot on growth. The company's expansion in Mindanao reportedly cost around 1 billion pesos as they work on reaching every corner of the region. They built a plant in Misamis Oriental, a plant that is capable of producing 130,000 loaves every single day. Aside from this, in late 2019, a 2 billion peso plant was inaugurated in Pampanga, its second largest manufacturing facility in the Philippines that is capable of producing 400,000 loaves and buns every single day. Now I'm sure you're wondering, why are they doing this? What's up with the aggressive expansion in the Philippines? Well, the Philippines is one of the strongest markets of Gardenia. The country is incredibly important to its mother company, QAF. You see, QAF is bigger than you think. The Singapore-based QAF is focused on three industries, the bakery segment, primary production, and trading and logistics. In the trading and logistics segment, this covers the trading and distribution of food and beverage products. They basically acquire the rights to distribute imported products. In the primary production segment, this covers the production, processing, and marketing of meat. This also involves the sale of animal feeds, breeding, farming, slaughtering, meat cutting, and meat distribution under their brands. QAF acquired Rivoli in 2001. Rivoli is the largest producer of pork in the Australasian region, which includes Australia, New Zealand, and New Guinea, accounting for around 20% of the region's meat production. Most importantly for QAF is the bakery segment. This is perhaps the most important industry for QAF. This segment covers the production and distribution of bread and bakery products. Now, QAF is already doing well with Rivoli and their primary production segment, but despite this, QAF's baking arm earns approximately 40% of the company's total revenues, based on their 2017 annual report. 46% comes from primary production, but despite the higher percentage, profits are higher in the bakery arm. During the 2019 QAF shareholders meeting, questions were raised as to why QAF insists on investing in primary production when it was a volatile and low-margin business, whereas the bakery segment was consistently generating stable cash flows with higher margins. This gives you a glimpse on the importance of Gardenia and QAF's other brands in the baking industry. And so going back to why Gardenia is investing heavily in the Philippines, well, that's because despite their dominance and success in Singapore, it's already considered as a mature market, a market where the prospects for growth are little to none. The Philippines, on the other hand, is a developing country with a population whose spending power is gradually increasing. QAF's financial reports show that 49% of the revenues comes from Australia, 21% comes from the Philippines, 20% comes from Singapore, 8% from Malaysia, and 2% for the rest. Knowing that both the Philippines and Australia make up a bulk of their revenues, QAF has made acquisitions that would take advantage of their foothold. Acquiring brands like Bonjour, which is the number two brand in Singapore for packaged loaf bread after Gardenia, and Baker's Mason. If Gardenia is QAF's brand in the packaged bread category, Baker's Mason is their brand in the unpackaged bread category. Baker's Mason is an artisanal bakery cafe offering French-style breads and pastries. The brand has gained popularity in Australia, which is a good sign considering the difficulty of penetrating the country's cafe market. I mean, even Starbucks did fail the first time it entered Australia, according to CNBC. QAF brought Baker's Mason to the Philippines, giving the company a player in the market that caters to a higher income bracket. Baker's Mason may be in the category of Mary Grace Cafe. And for the lower-income demographic, Gardenia launched the Big Smile Bread Station, which may be in the category of Julie's Bake Shop or Red Ribbon. Baker's Mason Philippines and Big Smile Bread Station are both under Gardenia Philippines. Gardenia didn't stop there. They also developed another brand for the packaged bread category, this time targeting the lower-income demographic with their New Bake brand. According to a report from Inquirer, New Bake's suggested retail price is around 36 pesos, while Gardenia's white bread is normally double that price. Gardenia has since entered into the bread spread category to complement their bread products. 
In Singapore, QAF distributes the Cowhead brand, most notably their Cowhead Butter and Cowhead Hazelnut spread. In Malaysia, the spread of choice is apparently a jam called Kaya Jam, some sort of coconut jam. Gardenia Malaysia launched their own line of Kaya spreads under the Auntie Rose brand. And of course, Delicia. Delicia was developed by Gardenia Malaysia to answer to the demand of the competitively priced bread spread category. So they launched Delicia Hazelnut Chocolate Spread and Delicia Milky Chocolate Spread. Both of these were apparently launched on a small scale but were so well received that now it's in over 14,000 outlets in Malaysia and was eventually brought to the Philippines in 2017. There is no denying that Gardenia is a massive company, backed by an even bigger one in QAF. It's a bright future for both of these companies because of the growth opportunity in Southeast Asia. And because of the success of QAF's bakery arm and their other sources of revenue, they have the luxury of funding the required costs of expansion. Since 2009, QAF lowered their borrowings by 40%. In fact, they have enough cash to cover 100% of their borrowings. It almost seems like the only thing that is stopping Gardenia from conquering Southeast Asia is themselves. And it almost seems like every area they decide to enter, they're able to corner the market with ease. Well, not quite. Apparently, in China, when Gardenia entered, it took them quite a while to reach profitability and up to now has yet to become a major player. And in the case of Cebu, Gardenia is one of the big players but is not a dominant market leader in the market just yet. But most shockingly though is Gardenia's failed attempt in replicating their success in Western Visayas, particularly in Iloilo, Bacolod, and the whole of Banay. Because despite the size of Gardenia, it got beat by a local player, Angelina Bake Shop, which has a huge 85% share of the market. A brand that has yet to expand to other regions in the Philippines. Kinda makes you think about what would happen to Gardenia's 60% market share if they did decide to grow beyond Western Visayas. But still, you can't discount the fact that Gardenia has produced one of the best white bread products to date. Their dominance in Southeast Asia is proof of the quality of their products and their mastery of scaling up. And I'm honestly really excited to see what Gardenia is up to next. And that's about it. Now you know about the brand origin story of Gardenia Bakeries. My name is Chris and I'll be back again next time for another episode of Brand Origins. If you enjoyed this show, it would mean a lot if you could tell your friends about Brand Origins. You can also talk to us on Twitter. We're at Brand Origins FM. Once again, thanks for listening to another episode of Brand Origins.